is yoga safe for somebody that has osteoporosis or osteopenia? So as a physical therapist and someone who has looked at the literature on yoga, exercise and yoga, or exercise and yoga for osteoporosis and osteopenia, because that's my specialty. I'm really interested in how we can improve bone health, prevent any of the um, fractures associated with osteoporosis. I'm interested in that. So, so I have read very carefully and try to discern what's safe and what's not safe for people with osteoporosis. And I want to encourage you to try things and see how it feels in your body. So that's part of what yoga does, is it allows you to feel things in a different way. But there are a few things that we know, very specifically, that can help build better bones. Number one, weight-bearing exercise, which is what we do in yoga. We do, um, you know, body weight. Sometimes I add weight in a safe way to uh, build strength, because that's the second one, strength training. So the strength training, when we strengthen a muscle, it pulls on the bone. And so we want to make sure that we're strength training muscles that are pulling on the parts of the bone that are at risk, that we know are commonly fractured. Uh, so we want to prevent any of those fractures, so we want to try to strengthen bone. Strengthen the bone associated with the areas of the hip joint that are commonly fractured strengthen the vertebra in a way that will be safe and won't do um, any further damage or put somebody at risk for fracture and then teach you how to move teach you how to control your movements with strength so that when you go to sit down you don't fall into a chair because it's that fall into the chair that you know that little bit of bump that can very easily start creating those fractures if you have osteoporosis we call osteoporosis a silent disease. It's micro traumas over a period of time with repetition that will create that change in the bone shape and lead to that rounded posture that you kind of see progress over time. So yoga can be very safe. You do need to have a variety of ways to do poses. You may not want to stick to the very traditional way to do a yoga pose so that you keep the pose safe for your spine. So last week I talked about uh, a segmental cat-cow. So can somebody that has osteoporosis and osteopenia do cat-cow? And I say yes, but let's talk about how we can do that cat-cow and keep it safe. So I love the all fours position. I love the all fours position. I like that it is working on your upper body strength, which is very important. I like that in a cat cow, we can get some core activation. But the one thing I do not like about cat cow is when someone really presses into their upper body and goes really rounded in those parts of the spine that are the most at risk. So I do not advocate rounding the stomp spine, pushing really hard because that's forceful flexion. Forceful flexion is what we want to avoid in the people that have osteoporosis specifically in their spines. Forceful flexion can be muscular action where you create flexion with your muscles, especially those abdominal muscles and create flexion. Forceful flexion can also be created in a posture or a position because of the weight of gravity. So I'm not gonna talk so much about gravity right now, but let's talk about how our muscles create flexion. So if we're pushing through our arms and we're engaging the whole abdominals and really getting that flexion in the, let's see, this is cat, right? Angry cat stretch, then I do not advocate doing that. However, I love some of the other parts of cat cow and what that can give you. So if you keep a nice neutral position of the spine, you can absolutely do cat-cow just through the pelvis and engage your abdominal muscles. 
So I'm pressing lightly through the arms just to get some shoulder strength and doing cat-cow through the lower part of my body. I talked about that in the segmental cat-cow video. The other part that I love about cat-cow is saggy cow, especially for that part of the spine, that thoracic spine that tends to be rounded. So the saggy cow position, let the chest sink while the elbows stay straight and really get that stretch through the mid and upper back. I give this to so many women um, that have that rounded spine. Shoulder blades draw together and down the back. So you can do a modified cat-cow, maybe a shorter cat-cow, because sometimes when you get that motion in the saggy cow, the low back really gets a lot of arch, and sometimes that hurts people's back. So you might have to control your cat-cow and just watch the head movements. A lot of people that have that roundedness through the mid and upper back also have some neck pain because there's when there's stiffness of the thoracic spine, there's more movement of the lower cervical spine, and that can be that can be a cause of arthritis. So it's a modified. So you want to get that full extension and then come back to neutral or a little bit of roundedness, but focus on saggy cow and squeeze the abdominals and then saggy cow and squeeze the abdominals, saggy cow, and just work the abdominals, but don't round forcefully the whole spine. So that's a way that you can modify cat-cow if you have osteoporosis especially. When you have osteoporosis, your risk for fractures is much higher. Osteopenia just means you're moving in that direction. So uh, if you ha already have the diagnosis of osteopenia, now's the time. Now's the time to take action and start an exercise routine that will strengthen your bones. So all of the standing poses that we do in yoga are great for that weight-bearing strength training. And then a lot of the positions that we use to encourage backward bending are also really great. So I hope this gives you just a little bit of information how I, I cue variety in my yoga classes so that you can, so that there are variations of the poses that suit you, whether you have back pain, neck pain, or osteoporosis. Have a great rest of your day. Namaste.